Hi, welcome to another Max8 tutorial. This is number 28. X fade. Jit X fade. Jitter X fade. So when we're working with jitter, which is handling video, um, we tend to use the dot jit items a lot. What is X fade for? It's for putting two uh, video sources together. So let's just get some video sources real quick. We'll click over here. Hopefully you have a new patcher and it's unlocked. And we'll get some of our included movies out here. Just grab Countdown, drag it out over here, and then get another one. Uh, I'm clicking on videos and then just scrolling down. What would we like to see today? Um, I do always enjoy the chickens. So let's get the chickens out. And they're quiet. We're not really going to be listening to anything today. So we've got our chickens and we've got our countdown. Let's make sure they're actually working. We'll create some new objects here. Uh, type J. Don't type N. Type J. And you get the JIT already. And then you can type P window. And there it is. Come on, P window. There we go. And then we'll just... Um, duplicate this one over there so we have some monitors and then we'll put a big one down at the bottom. I'm using the option key on my Mac to duplicate these. I am not sure what that is on a PC. However, if you hold the shift key down, you can see the problem with resizing this. If you hold the shift key down, it stays um, in the scale, whatever you hope your scale is. Okay, so let's connect up these patch cords here. Far left here, down to the little window. We can make that a little bigger so we can see what's going on there. And the same here. We'll just make that a little bigger. Oh, I guess I'll hold shift down and get it to be the right size. There it is. Look, see, I didn't hold shift on this one. I'm going to hold shift now. Oh, now it stays square. Great. Now I'm stuck with a square window. Eh, whatever. Oh, my goodness. Okay. See what happens? You make one mistake and you're stuck with it, but it doesn't really matter. It's just a, it's just a monitor. So let's click connect this patch cord over here and let us see if it works. We've got, and turn your loop on, turn your loop on. We have our chickens, we have our countdown. So all good. Now lots of people would just jump right in here and do this. Please do not do this. Depending on what rate they're playing, one of these will run over the other, but it's really messy. You're just you're causing your computer to get a headache right now. So you should never ever, this is a rule, I should print it here. There should never be two video patch cords going in any one outlet. It should just never happen. But what should happen is what we're going to do today. Um, and that is we're going to type letter J again. And now we're going to type X fade. I know I used a hyphen in the beginning, but it's no hyphen. It's just X fade, which means crossfade. And a crossfader, in old-fashioned terms, is the thing that moves uh, from one input to another smoothly. So there's X fade. We're going to connect this video output to the left hand inlet and this one to the right hand inlet and it will do the processing of fading from one movie to the other and now we'll just put the output here to this and see what we've got unsurprisingly it is chickens okay great so how do we control it so now what we have to do is figure out how to control it so let's just um, use our reference and figure that out. So highlight the JIT X fade and then um, go ahead and click on reference and you may have to drag uh, this. Well, I have to drag it over a little bit so that we can see it because uh, my recording window doesn't cover the whole screen here. So if you look down here, these are the attributes of X fade and that means that you can usually send them this message. So X fade 
is what we're interested here. And let me just move my oopsie. Showing people stuff is sometimes so difficult. Here we go. Get this back here. Just trying to get the information down here at the bottom. Okay, so the crossfade amount, a crossfade value of zero results in outputs equivalent to the left input and a cross value of 1.0 gives you a values equivalent to the right input matrix. Okay, so if we send the um, term X fade followed by a zero, we get the left channel and X fade followed by a one will give you the right channel. And I'm going to stress that those are uh, decimals. So let's type in N, we'll type prepend X fade. So whatever message we send through here, it will uh, prepend it with the term X fade. So now we'll just make two messages. Message one will be 0.0. .0. Remember that they are floats that we are sending. And let's make another message. You can guess 1.0. And that will go here. And we can put this one there. And we can put this one there just to remind us. And just for fun, let's make another message called 0.5. because after all, it is a fader. Okay, there we go. So lock your patcher and let's try it out. So we're gonna hit the zero. Unsurprisingly, nothing happens because it's already playing out the left channel. If we hit the one, we get all right channel. And if we hit 0.5, we get a blend, a gourmet blend of our video. That is fantastic. As everybody knows, we are never satisfied to simply leave it there. So how could we make this a whole lot nicer so that we could actually use it? Well, let us then uh, type the letter N, uh, excuse me, unlock your patcher and type the letter N, and let's just get a slider up there. Hello, slider. And let's make the slider um, horizontal so it goes from one video to the other here. Well, um, you guys come down here. No, go up there for a minute. There, stay there. Let's move all this stuff down. Give us a little tiny bit of space to work here. Okay, great. So, um, what we would like to be able to do is take our slider and go from here over to there. Okay, and have it control from one side to the other. So we know the slider is going to have to put out from zero to one. So the first thing we're going to do, unlocking our patcher again, is um, get the inspector and change the. Um, first off, we know we want it to be a float output. This is really important. Just keep thinking float output. If you use an integer, nothing will move um, smoothly. So we're going to click float output and then we're going to say our range is 1.0. Our output minimum is, one, is 0. Our output multiplier is 1 and I think that should do it except this one little thing bothers me. I don't like feeling that it should be all blue when I go to this side and all black on the other. I don't like that style of indicator, so I'm going to go up here and change it to just a regular indicator. And customizing things as I always do, let's make it red. There we go. I like that a whole lot more. Okay, so now um, we can connect this output <coughs> to our prepend X fade, lock our patcher. And let's just see how it works. So there we are, somewhere around the middle, and it's somewhere around the middle. And then I'm over at the left. I've got chickens all the way to the right. I've got the countdown. And you know that I am still not quite happy. Um, 
when you're doing things, you know, I know you guys are going to be out live VJing with this any time now. So let's um, very quickly, what we want then is something that tells this thing, go hard left, go hard right, go to the center, if and, and, and do it smoothly. So <laughs> I know we can do all that. So if we have something that says, um, when you get a zero or a here, I'll, I'll move them over here. This will be our new uh, our new working space here. When you get any of these, now you're going to send some information to this slider and tell it just what to do. And we're going to make it move smoothly. So now, whatever these numbers we uh, want to hit, we want to explain to the slider how to move slowly to wherever we tell it to go. And to do that, we are going to use an object called line. So type n, type line, type 0, point 0. And the reason we type the uh, 0 point, and though it gets rid of the 0, is to stress to that object, hey, you have to work in float points. So then it'll have an output. So let's put a float down here so we can watch it. Type the letter F or go get a float box from the menu up there. And then this will go around to this, uh, the, in, the uh, left hand input of the slider. And now we just have to figure out how to put these in here so that we can put a ramp time on them. So whatever we put in here, we're going to, and this is going to seem kind of uh, redundant and repetitive, but let's say type the letter N and type pack and type 0.0, .0 and then a regular zero. And this zero, the second zero is going to be for milliseconds. So let's put a an integer up here to go to this. Um, a little trick here, actually, you know, before that integer's even there, you can always put an actual integer in here, and if it hasn't received one already, it'll use this one. So this will be the the initial startup. So the first time this thing gets anything over here, it'll put out a 1000, unless we change it. And I say 1000 because 1000 milliseconds is a, is a second. So let's take these and uh, we could delete them or we could move them one at a time. It seems so wasteful to delete them and make new ones. And yet, anyway, so what's going to happen here? Any number we stick in here, it's going to get packed with 1000 for the moment, unless we change it. We haven't changed it yet. And then the repetitive redundant part, we have to unpack it and stick it in the line. So uh, say unpack 0, 0, 0.0 and 0. And we have our unpack object there because pack will send it out as a list and then we want it to go into here and then just connect the left hand outlet to the left hand inlet the right hand outlet to the right hand inlet and hopefully whatever we put in here will then ramp up ramp down here and cause this to move around slowly let's lock our patchers and see if it's working so if we hit zero nothing will happen that's as it should be how about 0.5 Oh, look at that. Oh my goodness, right to the middle, and then one. So it takes it about a second, all the way back to zero. About a second. Oh my goodness, it's just gorgeous. So we could put um, anything we want here uh, to tell it to do that, or you can grab the manual control and do it. So if you wanted to, um, you could... Uh, make a message that said, you know, uh, type the letter M 
and type uh, uh, capital A, I guess. And then uh, here we'll make it uh, real big before we move on to the next thing. So we'll go over here, make it 20. 20. Come on. Tw hey, I said 20. There we go. 20. Ah, 20 is not even big enough. Let's even make it bigger. 30. And let's put it in the center and uh, change the background color so that um, come on background color computers getting a little wonky um, we'll change the background color to blue get rid of the gradient there just a color fill of blue there we go okay now it's starting to look uh, professional, so then we can connect this to that, and then we'll just option click on this and duplicate it. And we'll change this one to B, and we'll change this one to um, uh, center. All right. You get the idea. Oops, I, I forgot to connect that. So connect that one to the one, connect that to that one. Huh? Huh? You didn't expect that, did you? It's so professional. Okay, and then you could take all these, put them in, yes, presentation mode, move it all over here, uh, move this stuff off to the side, and Whatever. Just thought I'd leave you in presentation mode here and put it in presentation. Whoops. You know, sometimes you have to... I forgot about that. They stay where, where I clicked the arrow into presentation mode. So you have to put all the things that you want in presentation mode Take them out of presentation mode. Uh huh. Oh boy, if you see that, you know you're in trouble. There we go. They're out of presentation mode, and now I'm going to put them back in presentation mode. And now, when we come over here, Let's lock our patchers this time and put it in presentation mode. And there we have it. Your, your uh, working fader there. Nice. Super professional, people. Well done. Thanks for watching, and I will see you in the next video tutorial.